I struggled when I came back from the last conference in February and I put it down to, uh, it was 7,000 feet above sea level, just having trouble adjusting. But I wasn't well and I went for this conference and I've come back with some symptoms that need me to just rest. And uh, so I'm hoping to put back Singapore for at least six to eight weeks um, and just take it easy. Um, I've got a um, ministry in Adelaide in May, but we'll assess where I am at the beginning of May. I just need to be a little bit wise. Um, being a workaholic is not always the best thing. It doesn't mean that you're in the rest of God or anything like that. So the interesting thing was that I'm going through this American conference, going through the airports, going... <sighs> and um, the only way I could make it was if I continually had my mind on the Word of God. So sometimes it was God sent his word and healed me and rescued me from the pit and, de and destruction, or uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Sometimes it was the Lord's Prayer. But as long as I kept my mind on the word of God, I got through everything, you know what I mean? He was just so good to me. Uh, and Daniel is amazing. Um, she'll be so glad. <laughs> <laughs> would I actually grow up? <laughs> um, but it was just incredible and it was so rich, the conference. I'm glad I went because um, we've been with Papa Chase since 2009 and, um, and it's just such an honour. Uh, he's always come to Australia in the past before COVID but he hasn't been for a long time. Um, so I was spending time in Melbourne and Adelaide before he comes to Brisbane. But he's, got, he's in over 72 countries, I think. His ministry, HIM, Harvest International Ministries. He has forgotten the number of churches that are under his, not under his covering, but are walking in alignment with him. We walk in alignment with him. Uh, so we walk in alignment with Papa Che, Robert Henderson, and Rory Jensen. She's my Aussie. Uh, and Papa Che is so busy, he might remember your face, but you can see the mind going, I should know you. <laughs> but um, if I had a problem, I would ring Robert Henderson because he's very relational. Papa Che is very, uh, he's, he's also relational, but he's got a massive Thing. So I could ring and they would put intercessors out on praying for me. But relationally, it's Rory and Robert Henderson. So just so you know, I'm aligned with them. And they have the right to ask me all the hard questions. And I have made Robert Henderson uh, my number one. <laughs> you always got to have a number one international uh, apostle. So that if there's any complaints against me internationally, I would go to Robert and he would help sort it out. Uh, in Australia, it's Rory. So just to let you know that I'm walking in alignment with these people. I'm not a, I'm not a maverick, I'm not a one-off. I'm walking in al alignment and in agreement with them. And what I love about them is that they are all relational. And uh, so the first part of the conference was uh, Robert Henderson had a day of realigning apostles and prophets, which was so powerful. There was Papa Che spoke, Keenan Bridges, Dutch Sheets. Danielle and I were in a, a lift with Dutch Sheets and I'm thinking, I've got all these books, I've got all these books. Don't act like a, don't act like a fan. Be cool, you know. <laughs> I mean, I've got all these books, so I'm standing in the same lift. <laughs> And then he, he's just making polite conversation. He said, do you often come to the States? And I said, I come at least twice a year, mainly to do with Robert Henderson. And he walked on a little bit. And then he turned around and came back to us and he said, I need to pray for your discernment. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert said he'd have been very disappointed if Dutch hadn't had something sarcastic to say. <laughs> But it was powerful. So there was an equal representation of apostles and prophets, and they were all international. Uh, Lance Walno couldn't attend, because, but he sent a video. Bill Hammond was there. 
uh, Rick Renner was on video. But there was an equal representation of apostles and prophets. And they realised that there is a, um, a dysfunction between apostles and prophets working together. It's like we've stalled, you know. Um, prophets don't think that we give them any attention. And apostles think, well, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but I'm the one who's got to bring things into order and I've got to establish it as an apostle. And so we're coming at it from two different things. So it was a powerful time of explaining the difference between apostle and prophet and how Jesus Christ is the cornerstone and he is the one that we measure everything by. So if you do not know Jesus Christ or the word of God, then, you know, you're at a disadvantage totally. So Jesus Christ is the cornerstone and he's the one we measure everything by. And then it says the apostles and prophets are the cornerstone, uh, uh, Jesus Christ the cornerstone and the foundation is apostles and prophets. But we've got to work together. And uh, I first saw that in one of Robert's meetings and I would say that would have to be about 14, 15 years ago when I was over in America. And it's the first Robert Henderson conference I'd been to. Uh, I had just had an experience in the courts of heaven and was trying to figure out what on earth is going on with this. And, and I stumbled across him and his teachings. And I thought, oh, that explains what, I, what where I've been involved in. And um, so I went across to his conference. And I'm sitting there, you know, a little Aussie pastor, uh, not really... Uh, I'm just an Aussie pastor, right? I wasn't anything much. I'm just there. And... Um, and then he's standing up and he's teaching. And then all of a sudden, this woman gets up and grabs the microphone and says, this is what I see in the spirit realm. And she talked about what she saw in the spirit realm or what God was saying or doing. And then he'd take the microphone back and he would land what she saw so that it manifested in the natural. Mm-hmm. And then he'd do a little bit more teaching and she would stand up and grab the microphone again. And I had never seen this. And I am thinking in my conceited attitude, does he not know how to hold a meeting? Does he not know how to run a meeting? Does he not know, you know? And then I realised it was the apostle and the prophet working together. And that's what I'm looking for. You know, the, the prophet says, this is what I hear God saying. But then the apostle is the one that manifests it and brings it to order and establishes it on the earth. So there's quite often a conflict because the prophet says, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm hearing, you know, and it's urgent. And the apostle is saying, yes, I get what you're saying and hearing. However, I need to bring it into order and I need to make sure that it's established on the earth. And so there's these two different kind of perspectives. So there was a bit of teaching from both sides. And then there was repentance. And it was powerful. There were tears everywhere. Mm. Uh, Robert called on me to uh, repent on behalf of Australia in the South Pacific. And all I could do was cry because of the lack of love. Because how can you minister as an apostle or a prophet if there's no love? And if you don't love the prophet or the prophet doesn't love the apostle, like if there's no love, there's no God, right? So I'm, I'm not exactly eloquent. I'm just, I'm just crying. I'm not sure that's what Robert wanted. <laughs> but I was just overwhelmed with the lack of love um, between the two ministries, apostles and prophets. Because God, God is love. And if, if love is not there, where you have to ask, where is God? Is it just ministry for ministry's sake? And then we all ended up with communion and it was powerful, absolutely powerful, wasn't it, Danny? I was going to get her to come up and share, but she's made sure that there's nobody down the back but her, so she can't come. <laughs> so um, that was a powerful day, really powerful, and uh, completely different shift in the atmosphere uh, at the end of the day. Um, And everything comes back to Jesus. And then the conference started. And what I loved about it was that the worship wasn't a lot of the um, current 
songs, but they were Jesus. Just, you know, like it's your breath in my lungs and um, Jesus, I enthrone you. And it was all about Jesus. So they had the morning session where they had speakers, speakers like John Bevere. Uh, there was Cheyenne, John Bevere. Uh, Robert, um, Lance Walner was supposed to come, but his daughter was having a grandbaby. So there was no way he was leaving his, his daughter and the grandbaby to come to a meeting. Uh, um, who else was there, Danny? John Bevere. Cindy Jacobs, she was a riot. She was an absolute riot. Very powerful. She prayed for one couple and they went down like a sack of spuds and they stayed down till the end of her session and they're still on the, on the stage when everybody else is leaving. And it was so funny because um, somebody else got a word and he used the man that was on the hit and he went down like a sack of spuds and then he used the man that was down on the ground as a Oh, I've just got to get up. And so he's pushing down on the man's belly to get up and the other guy wasn't even flinching. It was just amazing. Um, <laughs> it was just incredible. So they had all these speakers. There's two speakers in the morning. Uh, and then the afternoon was uh, panels. And then there was the evening, two speakers in the evening. But I found the panels absolutely intriguing. So the first panel was um, Israeli, on Israel, and they had um, a born-again Messianic Jew and there was an polit Israeli politician and somebody else, I can't remember, there's four people and they were all speaking on Israel and their perspective of what is happening. And that was amazing. You should be able to watch it on Rumble. Chayanne's been kicked off uh, Facebook, <laughs> like all good ministries. But you should be able to find him on Rumble. Um, Is that a yeah, Rumble. It's like um, it's like YouTube. It's just more freedom to stand up for what you believe. Um, and then the second afternoon, oh, I can't remember the order. Um, was all about politics. Mm -hmm. And these are ordinary believers that um, God has placed something on their heart. So one of them was the woman that was commissioned last year to start a woman's movement. That was, she was just commissioned as an apostle. She was to start a woman's movement. She has mobilized a million women to um, come down to Washington this month. In 12 months, she mobilised a million women. But she said, um, you know, like you can pray about something, but you've got to take it from the place of prayer to the public square. And when you take it to the public square, you can't talk the Bible. You can't talk what God says because people in the world really don't care. You know, they don't care. They don't believe in God or they, they just don't care. Um, but if you talk issues then that's a different matter and you touch their hearts, which then opens up a way for the gospel down the track. So the issue was um, the transgenderism of the children in the US, what they're being taught in sex ed at school. And uh, it, she's called the movement Don't Mess With Our Kids. And so all the mama bears, mm -hmm. saved and unsaved and pre-saved, are all just you know in it. And so they're marching in, in Washington to say, get your hands off our kids. Because in some states in America, and I think here, I'm not sure, they can, they can be put aside, but they can be uh, given transgender treatment without parents' consent. Right, which is really shocking. So you think you're sending your kids to school not knowing what's actually happening at school with your children. So uh, um, there's another woman, tiny little, tiny little thing like Janessa's size, and um, she's planted, was it 40,000 churches? Yeah, what are you doing, Janice? <laughs> I think it's 40,000 churches. Last year it was like 10,000 churches. This year it's over 40,000 churches. But she has targeted uh, the, the trafficking of children. 
and women. So it's all up in the northern part of, of India. And so she's, she's recognised the roots um, the, of trafficking. And so she's planting churches in all of these places. So this tiny little woman is overseeing 40,000 churches, bringing an end to uh, trafficking of women and children in that area. So it's just like incredible stuff that people are doing. And what I realised was that HIM has a way of removing mental strongholds and limitations that, because they just present the gospel like, well, Jesus has called you, get out and do it kind of thing. Um, HIM, yeah. Harvest International Ministries. Um, so she'd done 40,000 churches. Can you remember any of the other women? Because all of them were amazing. Leanne Goff, um, which we met last year in Singapore. She was also one of the women on the panel. Um, just, they're just doing amazing things. It's sort of like, well, I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. This is what God's laid on my heart. Let's just deal with it. Let's just go and do it. <clears throat> uh, and then there was another panel that um, were polit politicians. So one was a woman who'd been a state senator since 2012. And she's a born-again, spirit-filled believer. And Cheyenne, Papa Che, actually um, repented in public because he said the first time they invited her to speak at an HIM conference, he said to her, don't talk Democrat, don't talk Republican, just Jesus. But he says, realises now that you have actually got to confront and face. And so he's become a very political animal. Um, when they tried to close the church during COVID, he refused to close it. He was um, threatened with arrest. Uh, um, they were going to sue him and sue every member of his church thousands of dollars because they refused to obey government sanctions regarding COVID. So he actually took the Californian government to court and won, yeah. right? And so that's put a real fire in him to stop the political... Uh, Yeah, the political control over churches. So that's put a real fire in him. So there was that woman who'd been a state senate since 2012, I think it was, and three others, two women and one man, and they were going for different uh, places of government. One was local, one was state, I think, and one was federal. But again, they came back to talk issues. You know, don't talk Christianity because people in the world don't understand it. They don't understand atonement. They don't understand redemption. They don't understand any of those things, but talk issues. And they understand they're hurting financially when they're paying $7 a gallon for petrol or whatever it might be. You know, those things connect with their hearts because that's, that's their world. So meet them at their level and then you can lift them up into Christ. And one of them, they were saying that this is the first time they've run and all of them have made it through to the final because I'm not quite sure how it works, Leah, but they, they have to run in, in this and then they, the top two then go for the next. Yeah. So all of them have made it into the top two and so they're up for the final ones in November. Yeah. And uh, um, one of them was saying it cost the Democrat in what he was running for, I forget, how many thousands a vote. You know, if he wanted to get a vote in the Democrats, it cost so many thousands per vote. So far, he's managing a 19 cents a vote because God has given him the strategy and God has given him the key. And so he says, I don't need, we don't need the big bankroll. Um, you know, we just need God's strategy. We just need God's wisdom. So it's really interesting listening to them and how they realise that if they didn't enter what was politics, which is on their heart, nothing changes. Nothing changes, it stays the same. We can pray and pray and pray, but unless we have people who will step into situations, positions, places, unless we have people who are prepared to be the change makers, nothing changes. With the amount of prayer that went out around this nation for same-sex marriage, the amount of prayer that went out for other things, abortions and everything else, the amount of prayer that was released in this nation and still 
it got through because we had nobody on the ground. So we, we prayed in the, in the prayer place, but we didn't take it into the public square. And uh, that was one of the reasons anyway. Although I was shocked when I was down in Melbourne ministering to see the number of churches that were saying, vote yes for same-sex marriage. I was shocked. It was nearly every second church. I just couldn't believe it. So, you know, we've got a lot of maybe ministers that need to be a little bit more educated in the things of God and not swayed by um, social issues or personal feelings. God says, and that's it. So that was really interesting. But the one that got me excited, oh, my gosh, I said to Danielle, in between puffing for air, I said to Danielle, I'm ready to pack up and move to Taiwan because it looks amazing. So his church, and he had to have an interpreter because his English is very limited and very basic. But I just want to inspire you because in this room there is so much potential. And you might think you're doing well and you might think you're on the way, but there is so much more God wants to do in you and through you and with you and for you and around you. He wants to change people and communities and cities and nations. You know, that's our responsibility. So there's a lot of talk at the moment about are we pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib or future pre or whatever. I don't give a rip, quite frankly. I don't care. What I have to do is occupy until Jesus comes back. That's the mentality that I must have. And if, he's, if it's pre-trip, awesome, I'm going. If it's post-trip, I don't care, I'm still going. But I have to occupy until he comes. And that's a military stance. We have to occupy until he comes. That's the mindset of victory. That's the mindset of transformation. That's the mindset. Occupy until I come, he says. So we have this... Taiwanese church, which is amazing. He brought his team. Was there about seven or eight on the team? Seven. And so some of them spoke English. Some of them needed an interpreter. He needed the interpreter as well. But they were amazing. They were so full of joy, so full of life, and everything was Jesus. Everything was Jesus. And these are his leadership team. And he, he says to them, when he raises them up to leadership, he gives them two commandments. Start a business, start a Samaritan church. Start a business, start a Samaritan church. And one of the girls said, it is really difficult starting both at the same time. But, and she's a cat lady, but she has a dog church. So a Samaritan church is, you know, like we're baptised with power for Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So it's people in the community that don't go to church. And God laid on her heart to start a dog community church. So she thought, I'm a cat lady. Like, I really don't want to do this. But everything they do, they do with a spirit of excellence and a spirit of joy. It's just wonderful. It's contagious. And uh, she, so she started and so she got herself known in, the, in different dog circles. <laughs> Left the cat at home, but got herself known in different dog circles and um, said, you know, I'm, I'm starting this, it might be a dog show or whatever it might be, love you to come. They don't know it's for get born again and spirit filled. They don't know it's a church. They just know it's for people who love dogs. And so they, she started this, started a business, and started the dog community church, if you like. I don't know how else to phrase it. Dog community, dog lovers community church. And they do, the photos were amazing. But honestly, even the dogs were happy. <laughs> but the government is so thrilled with what they're doing. They've asked them to hold a dog Olympics. Yeah. But this gives them access to people who never come to church. I didn't ask. Probably a Saturday or whatever. Um, there's another one who's an American who ended up living in Taiwan. He loves football, but Taiwan doesn't play football. So um, he started a oh, 
fly football something or other. So he's starting to build a community around football. And in that community, people are getting born again, spirit-filled, saved, healed, delivered and set free. And so it's recognising that God has put a love in your heart for something. Reach out for the people who have the same kind of love. So there was the football. There was one for homelessness. And I loved it because out of respect for people, they actually... Um, covered the face of the homeless. Um, there was um, David Chang as the pastor. His wife has started um, teaching children the first three years of education, teaching them what they need to know at heart, resilience and all that kind of stuff. Not so much necessarily education, but heart attitudes that are important. So that's what she's doing. Um, but they're all being recognised, not all, but a majority of them are being recognised by the government. And it's called Fight.K Church. Fight for the Kingdom. That's what it stands for, Fight for the Kingdom. And it's mainly young people, uh, teenagers, people in their 20s, early 30s, mainly young people. Um, I checked to see if he'd written any books, but if he has, they're all in Taiwanese or Cantonese or Mandarin or whatever. So, uh, But he was just so... Everyone of his team was so joyful, so happy, so in love with Jesus and so excited about what they're doing. It was just wonderful, you know? And he kept saying, I'm the father of the house and father pays. I'm the father of the house and father pays. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't like where this is heading. <laughs> But he took his whole leadership team to Italy last year on a holiday. Mm. Paid for everything. Wow. For them all to go to Italy, he paid for the accommodation, the airfares, everything. He paid for it because father pays. Fa father looks after the house. Um, he bought a car, a, a very nice, I don't know if it was brand new, but it was a really nice model car because he said, I'm getting them starting all these businesses. They can't turn up for business meetings in a daggy car. They need to have a nice car. So he's bought this car so anybody on the leadership team can use it for business meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and then he paid for everybody on the team to go to America and, uh, and to be involved in the HIM conference. But it was just phenomenal, wasn't it, Danny? I think he was one of the highlights. Um, the sheer joy that came out of every person that spoke from Fight K Church. They were so in love with Jesus uh, and Jesus was everything. And it's not easy starting a business and starting a church, particularly with dogs if you're a cat lady, but Jesus, you know, is everything. Um, so it was really an interesting time in that you saw people doing things out of the box. They were doing things differently and it was okay. And so the whole of, you know, their, their church or their community um, supported them, upheld them, stood with them, encouraged them, prayed for them, whatever it might be. But it was really encouraging to see politics, um, business and churches starting together. Because uh, we've been praying, because I don't take a wage from open heaven. I have my own business and I get my money from that. Um, so I always wanted to start with, you know, they've got to be a business that supports the church because sometimes we might get five bucks. <laughs> we did once got five dollars in for tithes or no, offerings, um, but, but it was marked missions. <laughs> so we got nothing that week, but it, we, we passed the test because of, uh, my friend and I who were doing the finances just broke down and laughed. <coughs> you know, you've got to pass the test. Uh, so just so you know that the tithe goes to people. It covers itinerant ministries, it covers widows and orphans, it covers people who have needs, um, car regos, rent if it's a problem, food. The tithe is for people. And according to the offerings, the first time offerings is mentioned in the word of God is when Moses um, was building the tabernacle and the people brought free will offerings. So our offerings are used for things, they're used for rent, um, if we have to, we've got to buy another computer this week, so it'll be for the computer, um, things like that, because it's tithe is people, 
offering his things. Um, and so we work it that way. But it was just the freedom to um, actually sit and dream. And like, what is it that God has placed in your heart? And what is it that you really actually want to do? Even if you're a cat lady and he's called you to start a dog community church. But what is it? What, what are the mental strongholds or the church culture strongholds that need to be broken so that once again we become a people that just love Jesus? That he's everything. That he's our joy, he's our peace, he's everything, Jesus. And he's more real to us than anybody else in the room. And then what has he placed in your heart that he wants you to do to bring change? And so I just want to say, I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> I'm really done. Um, but I want to say here that I want to encourage all of you to chase the dreams God's placed in your heart. No matter how deep it's buried, no matter how much you've put on top of it because it never seemed to be the right time or there never seemed to be the right amount of finances or you just never seemed to meet the right people. Sometimes we cover our dreams with, with stuff. Sometimes it's words from other people. Well, who do you think you are? Um, one of my pastors said that to me when I had a vision of Jesus coming to me during worship. And Jesus said to me, what do you want? And I said, I want the nations as your inheritance. And he said, hold out your hand. And I held out my hand and he dropped nations into the palm of my hand. So I went and told my pastor, thinking that was what you did. And he looked at me and he said, you? Why would God do that to you? And I went, oh, I don't know. So it took me a couple of weeks to work through that, thinking, well, he's my pastor. But all he saw was a single mum. Right, he didn't know me by the spirit. So um, I want to encourage you. You all have dreams on the inside. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you, you all have dreams that were given to you at birth or even before the foundation of the world. Sometimes we've let people steal them from us. Sometimes we've let people talk us out of them. Sometimes we've put them on the shelf saying, oh, well, we don't have the money, the time. I don't have the right people. It's never going to happen. Um, whatever it might be. But I just want to encourage you to dream with Jesus. Get your joy back about Jesus, right? He's everything, Jesus. Live with him well. And then, you know, you've got the freedom to whatever he's placed in your heart for you to do. The only thing I ask is that you let me know because I have to give an account to God for the state of every soul in open heaven. I pray for you. And... Uh, and it's just courtesy. I pray for you. I'll come to you if I get something. I think, hey, I'm just getting this warning in the spirit. I'm just letting you know I'm praying for you, but this is what I'm picking up. Um, but you also need to reciprocate and let me know. I'm never going to say don't do that. I'm never going to say stop that. But I might say I have a check in my spirit. Can we pray it through together? Because that's a protection for you, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't want anyone going out there like a lone maverick. Because I've done that and it's painful. So, um, Danny, is there any highlight that you need to bring out? <laughs> Thank you, Danny. It was worth going. Um, it was definitely worth going. Just the freedom for people to pursue their destiny. Um, the joy that they find in Jesus and uh, how we represent the kingdom. So we're just blessed, you know, we're blessed. We're in a free country. It's, we're not, we're in a free country. And um, yeah, praise God for that. Let's keep it free. Let's keep it free. You know, let's get involved. Whatever you want to do, get involved. Get to know your local member. Um, <coughs> but, but start being a voice for the kingdom of God on earth. But speak about the issues because people in the world really, one woman said to me, I really don't care what your God says. And I was like, oh, because it's everything to me, you know, like it's everything. But she's an unbeliever. So I have to learn to re redirect the conversation um, to come to heart issues. 
Any questions? Single moms. There was yeah. something that happened when you said he only saw me as a single mom. Mm. But there's, I, I feel like there's a, a blessing that that can be released over single moms. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So because it's often um, an invisibility thing. Yeah. And it, yeah. That, that they're used to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that there's an honor. God's, there's, God, there's an honor. Like yeah. There's a favorite honor that God wants to release. So, Father, we thank you that under the new covenant, it's all grace. It is all grace. We thank you that Jesus is the grace of God in action. And we thank you that you actually said in, in James that only blessing is to come out of our mouth, not blessing and cursing, just blessing. And so we lift up the single mums uh, in all their various situations and circumstances. And we release the blessing of God over their lives that you would be their husband and that you would cause them to be seen and cause them to be heard and you would remove the uh, veil of invisibility you would remove the veil that keeps them uh, caught up in hopelessness or financial pressures and lord that that the, the single mums would be set free to be deborah's and um, amazing women of God that you call them to be. So we speak right now that every trap, every kind of thing that Satan would be using to keep the single mums um, constrained, restricted, limited and held down, let that be busted open right now by the power of the Holy Spirit and let the blessing of the Lord come upon the single mums, but not just the single mums, but the single women. We release it over the single women as well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anything else? Um, Adrian. Well, it should be bigger than us so that he is doing it. Gwyn. Sorry? Oh, my gosh. When they spoke about Israel at the forum on the panel, they talked a lot about um, media control, um, um, political maneuverings in back offices, and that a lot of the stuff that's happening has not been presented as truth. It's been manipulated and twisted. Um, and they weren't, they weren't anti anything. They were ba basically saying, we just want to live. And we want the people around us to live. We don't have a problem with them. We do have a problem with Hamas. But we don't have it with a terrorist organisation. But we don't have a problem um, with anybody wanting to live with us. There's so many Arabs living in Israel that they don't want to go to Gaza and live be even before the whole thing broke out. They're quite happy in Israel because they've got the same rights as, as an Israeli. So they were saying, you know, life is very important to us. But the media and the politicians have their own agenda. Let me tell you what I saw, which I would love to see here. The sheer joy of knowing Jesus. The sheer joy of walking with him. It was just wonderful. You know, like... Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of the Taiwanese church. <laughs> they were, 
they were so in love. They're so in love with Jesus. You know, start a church and now where's your Samaritan? Start a business and where's your Samaritan church? What's that going to be? So one says football, one says homeless, one says dogs, you know. <laughs> but they're changing those communities. That's church outside the walls. It's church outside the walls. And if you have a look at fight.k, fight for the kingdom, you will see that most of their members are young. And then they're all in, you know, they have parties and picnics and, but they're all young people, which is what I would love to see here. That was one, a picnic church. Yes, right. It was too, a picnic church. Yes. Yes. We're changing communities. So, you know, like, feel free. <laughs>